Hello my soccer universe. While my two teams in Austria and Italy only delivered four points this weekend for me and rather unconvincing performances but more on those in the dedicated Austrian Bundesliga in Serie A review videos. We had a really marquee weekend as well despite there not being that many big clashes. We had a Premier League weekend full of upsets. We had a German Bundesliga weekend that saw both promoted teams winning and quite a few big results along the way as well. We had a pre-decision probably in France already. We had a weekend that no one really wanted to have to be honest in Spain and we had also Ruben Amorim's last home game for Sporting. But the biggest game of course and the best game I would even argue happened in the Netherlands and this is where we will start. With an unprecedented week, beating Feyenoord first in the Klasika and then PSV 3-2 in the Topa, Ajax catapult themselves back very much into the title race there with a game in hand, now five points behind PSV, so all to play for. And that game was a top game that everything that you would like from it. Ajax controlled the early stages, however it was PSV who took the lead after a perfectly executed dead ball situation, a long cross in and De Jong headed in for the lead with the first chance for PSV. That rattled Ajax a little bit. Still, they got themselves into the game when a hard cross was headed in by David Klaassen in the 44th minute. After the half, PSV came out storming, took the lead through a beautifully played goal via Sabari through Perisic who one times it from the edge of the box into the net and then it could have been three as well. However, around the hour mark, Hoots came on for Ajax. That changed a little bit, but it was a play error by the PSV defense that was pressed high by Ajax, the ball comes through Fijim and Fijim actually converts to make it 2-2 and suddenly the momentum was back with Ajax who then completed the comeback with a Hoots goal in the 74th minute, he actually hit in the post as well. What an exciting game, what an exciting championship this could be. We have at least a title race and there's no team unbeaten anymore in the Eredivisie. Well, beside the top of it, another big game in Holland, which was Feyenoord against AZ. Feyenoord trying to avoid a horrific week for them after losing to Ajax, they at least get the 3-2 win over AZ, but it was not that straightforward. Yes, they controlled more or less the first half, but when you thought this will be a workman-like win, Parrot gives AZ the halftime lead. It needed then more than 15 minutes in the second half until the game tilted towards Feyenoord. First, it was a Wolfe own goal, then Ivano sets two minutes later, gives Feyenoord the first lead, and when Osman in the 82nd minute makes it 3-1 for Feyenoord, you really thought that now Feyenoord are cruising. However, they take a step back, Merding in the 89th minute pulls one back, and then there were some nervy moments. It could well have ended 3-3. However, with that win, paired with Ajax's win over PSV, Feyenoord may still be in a title conversation. And I uh, quickly run through some other notable results as well. We had Twente getting a 1-0 away win at Willem II. We had Utrecht getting a 4-1 win at Sparta Rotterdam. Those were two teams that were fighting for European spots last season. Nijmegen beating Groningen 6-0. Rather big result there as well. We had quite a remarkable Premier League Saturday. First off, Newcastle beat Arsenal 1-0. In a game that was really more like a 0-0, where a goal was scored. Anthony Gordon across in and then Isaac heads it in from a relatively short distance. Too little happening from Arsenal. The injuries are catching up with them. Not much creativity, only from dead ball situations and not even from there. Then, Forrest move all the way up in third place, beating West Ham United 3-0. Chris Wood, who else? He's in rare goal scoring form. Opens the scoring, then Edson Alvarez is sent off and Hudson Doe and Ole Aina add two more. Is Forrest going to Europe next season? That will be one to watch. And if you thought that Newcastle beating Arsenal was already an upset, it really wasn't to be honest. Bournemouth beating Manchester City for the first time in the Premier League ever. That was a true upset. They do it 2-1 and fully deserve it so. They had a one nil lead halftime through and Semenyo goal. Then Evan Nielsen adds a second one. There should have been a third. Then later on, Jose Guardiola pulls one back. Erling Haaland has a great chance where he puts it on the post but too little too late. City for which means that with a win Liverpool could have taken top of the table however they find themselves down to a Brighton side who more or less outplayed them in the first half Cagliolo scoring the goal in the 14th minute then Liverpool ratch up the intensity and turn it around within three minutes first is Cody Gakpo again against Brighton like he did in the League Cup and then Mohamed Salah with a brilliant shot ahead of the cup and of course gives Liverpool the lead they had some nervy moments but they see the game out and Liverpool are back on top of the Premier League table let's talk about a few 
more Premier League results from the weekend. We had Southampton getting their first win of the season with a 1-0 over Everton, while Ipswich had their first win denied with a stoppage time goal by Jordan Ayew of Leicester. Furthermore, Crystal Palace were overall the better team, however they find themselves 2-1 down at Wolves again get a stoppage time equalizer. Then on Sunday we had a brilliant second half Spurs performance turning a 1-0 halftime deficit through a Rogers goal against Aston Villa into a 4-1 win. Brennan Johnson getting the equalizer right after half and then the last three goals came in the last 15 minutes when Son already had to controversially come off. I guess they want to manage his minutes. Solanke is scoring two goals and especially the go-ahead goal was a real beauty and then Madison adds a fourth one with a free kick. Meanwhile the big United against Chelsea clash ended unexpectedly in a draw a game not much to talk home about except that it looked like a 0-0 until that penalty was given to United that Bruno Fernandes slots home and then that my old Moses Caicedo equalizer was a real beauty of a shot. The Monday evening game in the Premier League was also quite eventful with Janet giving Brentford the lead with the first shot on goal for them and then they were defending valiantly until Harry Wilson finally breaks the deadlock in stoppage time with a pirouette and a back heel really great stuff. Suddenly Brent for coming out they want to get the win again and again it's Harry Wilson that, that scores for Fulham in the 97th minute and now Fulham are overtaking their local rivals. I think the most interesting part of the German Bundesliga weekend is that both promoted teams got actually win. St. Pauli winning at Hoffenheim 2-0 and Holstein Kiel celebrating a 1-0 win over Heidenheim. That's quite remarkable. However, most people will be talking about the top clashes. We had an absolute top clash, at least when you look at the table from last season between Bayer Leverkusen and Stuttgart. Leverkusen dominating that one, but they cannot put the ball into the net and so it ends nil-nil. And there is already a little bit of discontent with people in Leverkusen realizing we're not as good as we were last year. Because now you sit seven points behind Bayern Munich, who got a very easy 3-0 win over Union Berlin. Harry Kane, of course, scoring again. A brace, Kingsley Coman in there as well, assisted by Harry Kane. And Bayern are even three points clear now. Now, because Dortmund managed to come back against Leipzig, beating them 2-1 at home, a little bit better from Dortmund this time around. The big hero in this game was Maxi Bayer, who equalizes for Dortmund three minutes after Szeszko had given Leipzig the lead and then also assists the winner by Girasi in the 65th minute. Another eye-catching result is of course Frankfurt beating Bochum 7-2, Marmouche extending his lead on top of the goal scoring charts. An absolute great Frankfurt side, very offensive on front, a little bit shaky on the back, which makes them real fun watching. After half an hour they were already up 4-0. Bochum seem to be really the team that is going down this season, but we have said that before. Second half of the season usually sees some comebacks. And finally, I want to mention Borussia Mönchengladbach, who finally got a good win. It is a 4-1 over Bremen, thanks to a really strong first half with play A, Friedel on goal and Onora scoring. And then it ends 4-1. Maybe this is a turnaround for Gladbach. And we also had the draw for the round of 16 in the German Cup to be played in early December. Two fixtures stick out. We have Bayern against Leverkusen. That's, of course, the big marquee fixture. But we also have Leipzig against Frankfurt. Also two top teams from this season. Well, our faint hopes for a title race in France have taken a big hit, with Monaco losing at home to Angers the third time in a row that they don't get a win. And against Lowly Angers, this was a really, really bad performance. Friday evening, Aoulou in the 29th minute scoring the win, and Monaco didn't really have an answer to that. With an early Jonathan David goal, Lille seemed to be set for another win, and then very late on, for Fahna in that stoppage time, gets Lyon an equalizer, and so points dropped for Lille in their quest for another Champions League berth. And they might be ineffective and very much non-convincing of PSG get another win. 1-0 over Lens. It's Ousmane Dembele after Barcola assist already in the fourth minute, setting them on the path to victory. Missing tons of chances. Ousmane of Lens also got sent off. But, you know, not much to talk home about. And still, you have a clear lead on top of the table at the moment. Nice also continued their winning run after beating Monaco. They beat go to Brest and also beat the Brestois. The winning goal came through Gesson in the 42nd minute. Keita Nakamura watch, he didn't score. Reims also didn't score. They lost 1-0 at Toulouse. And then on Sunday evening, Marseille beat not 2-1 away from home. A big bounce back win for them after losing Le Classique. Also meaning they are now still in contention for a Champions League berth. And it's the two bad boys, Neil Mopp opening and scoring and Mason Greenwood getting the winner in the 61st minute after his very nondescript performance in Le Classic. <music> 
In Ruben Amorim's final home game before his move to Manchester United on Friday evening, Sporting continued their perfect run, winning against Estrella 5-1 in a local derby, if you would like. And Victor Jökeres scoring four goals, including a first half hat-trick. But in between, Rodrigo Pino made it 2-1 at one point. However, this was really very convincing for Sporting once again. And he is hoping that Amorim's departure does not derail the Lions. However, they still only have a three-point cushion because Porto also got a 4-0 win at Estoril and Porto is really hot on their heels having only lost to Sporting. Benfica also get a 2-1 away win at Farange and Braga also a 2-1 away win at Aruco. So all the top teams win again as is typically in Portugal. The mind of people in Spain was definitely not on football. The round in La Liga still went on with two games being postponed. The ones between Valencia and Real Madrid and Villarreal and Rayo since the connection between Madrid and Valencia is not very well at this moment. And here my thoughts and well wishes to the region of Valencia and everyone in Spain that has been affected by this catastrophic flooding. And so everything takes a backseat. Even a wild 4-3 win of Girona against Leganes does not really resonate. With Barcelona winning the derby against Espanyol 3-1 with 3-0 up at the half, then they're cruising. And with a little bit of luck, Espanyol could have gotten back in the game. They pulled one back, but the two goals disallowed for very marginal offsides. Atletico Madrid also showed a little bit better, beating Las Palmas at home 2-0. It's only Las Palmas, but they were on a winning streak so far. And Simeone's son scoring in the process as well. We also had Athletic Club doing a Betis to Betis, wasting tons of chances. Should have been up a whole lot early on. Betis take the lead and then Bilbao only can manage an equalizer through Berenguer. And on Monday, Aspas early on assists Dubikas to give Celta a 1-0 lead. The Getafe never could really answer the Inverden with a man less in the second half. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!